Hi, welcome to another episode of 256 Seconds with .NET Dave. I am David McCarter, aka .NET Dave. In this episode, I'm going to talk about my process when I go to find a third-party product for Visual Studio. And this is the process I use, whether it's components to drop onto forms or web pages or memory profiling tools or code analysis tools. Any of these tools, I go through the same process. And I think you should too. Here's why. I worked at a company here in San Diego once that I was a principal software engineer and many of the other lead engineers came to me and would ask me, Dave, you know, we're thinking about doing X, Y, and Z. I would think for a minute and since I'm a Microsoft MVP, I would come back to them and say, well, why don't you go check out this from Microsoft or maybe this from a third party company. Every single time, it never happened. Why? Because for some reason, from the architects on down at this company, they thought they could write it better than a whole army of people at Microsoft or a whole army of people at DevExpress or Telerik or Grape City or any other great third party companies out there. And guess what? <laughs> Whatever they built was not near as good as what they could get out of the box from Microsoft or another company. There was actually one project there. They were trying to build this workflow program for four and a half years while I was there they were trying to build and architect this workflow program. And when I left, it still wasn't working. And there's work, there's been workflow programs out there for a really long time. Anyway, getting back to the subject, this is the process I use every time before I pick a third party product. I usually pick just less than a handful of companies to look at. Actually, I try to keep the number to three companies. So. For example, for a third-party product for components for UI, I might pick the top three companies, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I usually try to keep it to three, maybe four, but I try to keep it to three. There's only so much time I can spend doing this. I go to those companies' websites, I read the reviews that people have posted, uh, whether I find it on the website or I find it through Bing or Google. I also check out their documentation, how good or bad it might be. I also check out their sample code. If you can download the sample code or the, is the sample code real world examples as opposed to calculators and things that nobody can use. Next, I go and I download and install the uh, product. If I can, I install it on a pretty clean virtual machine. I don't do it on my real development machine. The third step I do is then test their product. And one thing I like to do is I try to test, I don't, well, let me back up. I don't usually evaluate with any sample code the company provided. And the reason I don't do that is a lot of sample code out there isn't really real world. So what I do is I try to write a really quick, small app as real as I can to maybe the, the feature that I want to implement to see if their product will work. If it's easy enough to connect to the backend data store and things like that. I really like to do that so I can test the data coming back and forth uh, between the controls and things like that. So I try to write a really quick test sample app to evaluate the product. So I look at all these things and does it come almost to exactly what I need or if exactly what I need, then boom, I'm done, I stop. If I had some issues along the way, maybe I had some issues with maybe tech support or ease of use of the product, then I'll go to the next company and start this process all over again and do this three times until I find the product I need. And this doesn't need to take very long. It could take a day, a couple days, those couple days you spend evaluating products for a feature that you need, those three days is very well spent because you're going to save a lot of money later. Most of the products out there are very reasonably priced. And if you take a day or two or three, you've already spent more money evaluating products than the product cost itself. And of course, those products have a great return on investment as opposed to writing things yourself, testing them, and getting them into, into production. It's a very long, expensive process. All right, so that's it. That's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please contact me at this email address if you have any questions. 
I'm more than happy to answer questions. And also make sure to attend one of my conference sessions at a conference near you on the .NET Dave Rock the World Tour. See you soon. Hey, this is .NET Dave. Check out my new videos on demand on coding standards, on defensive programming, on 10 things you're probably not doing in your apps, on a real world example, and rock your technical interview. If you come to one of my sessions on the .NET Dave Rocks the World Tour, get a code for 50% off one of these awesome videos. With more coming soon, check them out now.